a gamepad residual. So this is a uh, residual and um, this is the current version's inventory screen, which is a very simplistic, very empty, very clean, just not very uh, exciting. It's functional, you can browse through everything, but it had some flaws. Yeah, it had some flaws. So as you can imagine, all week I've been working on residual, um, turning it into a pixelated football game because I'm going for that FIFA license. But in order to do that, I needed to start with a new inventory screen, which sounds much more obvious. So uh, after the intro, new inventory screen. Also the reasons why, why a new inventory screen, what was wrong with the previous one and why didn't you fix it when you released the game months ago after the intro. But if anybody from the FIFA is watching this, I don't mind doing a football game. I'm open to doing a cool football game. Like, seriously, I know a lot about it. I've played it when I was younger. I still watch it every now and then. So the inventory screen that launched in Residual is pretty much a first design. Uh, it was one of the first things I created when creating Residual. I needed an inventory screen. Uh, this just looked cool at the time, so I started implementing it. But over time, the amount of information and data that was tied to the inventory, it just grew uh, It just got a lot bigger. They got a lot more data. We started adding crafting, then we needed to show you which item do you need to craft. How many of those items do you have? And a lot of extra information just got uh, pushed onto the screen that was already there. And normally these type of screens, I will design one and over time it will change. And this time I just didn't get around to changing that inventory screen. It was functional, it worked. It looks okay and decent. It's not a bad looking one. It fits with the whole interface design of the game but especially on the Switch version, once we got to that point, the PC version was already done, started to work on the Switch version, seeing that inventory screen on the Switch display, it just looks very small and tiny. It just looks, it was clumsy. It wasn't how I wanted it to be, but we also didn't have a lot of time to do a complete redesign of the inventory. Also at that time, um, I think I was 15 or 16 months into the development of the game. As a solo game developer, day in, day out, full time, I was kind of done working on the game. So why now? Why am I updating it now? A um, couple of reasons. First reason, I needed a little break from Regulator City, the game I'm working on now. So I figured it was an interesting thing to do. Um, I thought it would cost me a whole week just trying to come up with a design, but I had most of it all up and running in the first day on Tuesday. It's now Thursday as I'm recording this. So two days ago, I had most of it up and running. Then I started adding uh, extra bits and pieces. I'll get into those in a minute and show you all that stuff. Um, the second reason why now is that I am working towards a mobile version of the game. And of course, with this screen being tiny on the Switch, um, the phone is even a smaller screen. So we need something bigger, bolder, better looking and easier to navigate, even with fat fingers and tiny screens. I don't have fat fingers, but some of you might or have very tiny screens. I'm not judging, size doesn't matter. That's what they told me. Anyway, let's hop on those changes. Uh, there's a lot to go through and process and talk about. Also, having played Residual again this week, um, changing the inventory, but also just trying the game again and playing it from scratch to survive off a planet, I'm back in love with this game again. Um, a lot of stuff happened. There's a lot of stuff that still is in my planning to add to the game and I hope to get to that point where I can start working on those. Uh, the inventory is a huge step in the right direction. So uh, hopefully more updates are coming, probably even this year. Uh, this inventory screen is coming to PC, but also the Switch and of course the mobile versions and, and, and any other versions we still have in the pipeline. For now, let's look at the new inventory screen. So here we have a little game and let's check, uh, let's grab this. Let's dive into the inventory. This is the new inventory, the base screen. I replaced the white icons with these much more colorful icons. And beside that, I made them twice the size. So this should really uh, make it 
a lot easier and clearer to navigate even on small screens like the switch or the mobile phone um, quick access I'll get to that in a minute but first let's dive into food you'll notice that you'll be able to see uh, what the increase is to your health if you eat these things also if it's best to cook it like a fish or a mushroom it will also add that note to it so there's more information on the right side of the screen and the purpose of all this is to hopefully especially new players help them ease into the game and understand what's happening because there's a lot of stuff being added to your inventory sometimes you don't notice it this should all make it a lot easier and clearer to navigate and understand in the tools we have these deployable devices i think this is the bigger change here um, you can now see how they deploy and what they look like once you place them somewhere on the planet that just hopefully makes it a lot clearer for gamers to understand that uh, this little box with the pinkish thingy turns into this uh, deuterium mining device and this metal thingy or this blue thingy turns into the metal device hopefully it helps uh, players I think it does it does it even helps me because I forgot about most of these combinations so for me it's a good learning session and also that's a very good reason to do these type of things now because during game development I've been working on this game for like I said 16 months and I've been working on the game day in day out at some point it all becomes second nature and you don't really see a lot of the flaws that are in your game um, by now having these fresh eyes I haven't touched the game in like I don't know six months seven months it's all new to me as well I forgot most of it I've been working so hard on regulated city that that game is constantly on my mind and a lot of these things are fresh to me as well so now I can actually see the flaws in some of my logic and in design and things like that over here we have the bunch of items that you can collect and find everywhere and here we have resources uh, all still neatly placed in different categories that hasn't changed from the original one and the crafting menu shows um, most of the changes and most of the interesting ones like um, showing what's required this was very messy in the previous version but now that i know all the type of stuff i want on the screen it's a lot easier to design it so you can now see what you need to create it it will also show you how much you have of each item and how much you need and if you cannot create it let's see if we can find one thing we don't have resources for no we have resource for everything uh, torch needs to coal I think I can throw away uh, resource coal yeah that's gonna run we got one out of the way let's throw out the other now if we go crafting and we try to craft this torch as you can see uh, we don't have enough resource we don't have the coal we have zero out of one so uh, we also should get some sleep I failed that one I just uh, dropped in front of this chair right let's wake up again and uh, let's see if our coal is still there because we uh, need our coal to it's still there all right one two and if we go back into the inventory we should be able to craft a torch again because we have more of these resources now so um final screen of the inventory is when you visit uh, the printer inside your ship and this also has gotten a bunch of upgrades um, first of all top left corner you see the amount of nanobots you have right now you need nanobots to create everything here uh, you'll also notice there is an item here with an orange exclamation mark well, let's go there this is part of a current mission you might not know that the mission is refine quartz you might not know how to do it find the exclamation mark you need this device to do it uh, luckily we can create it. we have enough nanobots for it and if we don't have enough of the nanobots let's see if we create something well let's just create this one now if we go back um, you'll now notice that some of these items are uh, dimmed not highlighted we can't create those because we don't have enough nanobots so this one and this one can cannot be created this one cannot be created but we just created one so that's okay it also shows we have one of them so um there's a lot more information and useful information on this screen now and i think this is also going to help a uh, new players ease into the game especially these exclamation marks and the information on the left and right so um yeah i'm very happy with how that all changed and got enhanced 
All right, so that quick axis I wanted to get back to, we now need to refine quartz. So we should be placing a quartz refinery. We have one in our inventory. So if we open up the inventory screen, you'll notice in quick access, it is now shown as one of the items that you might want to use. It's also nighttime and cold outside. So the other one might be a campfire. The game now adds these things um, context sensitive to your current situation. If you are very sleepy or low on health and you're very deep down in the planet, it will show you your field generator because you might want to teleport back as soon as possible to your ship. You don't have to go search for it. It will be available in quick access. Uh, I've been playing the game a bit with all this stuff in there and that quick access has saved me so many times now that it just had the right type of items in there at the right moment. Um, I'm very pleased with myself of creating this and coming up with it. Um, all right, apparently there's some new entities or creatures here, so we might need a DNA scanner. And again, it's cold, it's dark, we're down under. We might need to light a campfire. So um, quick access is really gonna be a lifesaver for many gamers. It will really show you, um, sorry, I'm just invested in the game again. It will really show you the type of items you need or should be using. And there's less uh, searching around in your inventory, trying to find that one item that you might be able to need or use to open up a certain area or to continue on your missions or whatever. This is just gonna help a lot. So on Tuesday, the first thing I did was create a new class, which is just an empty source code file for those that are not game developers. And I started to uh, rebuild everything from scratch. I should not have done that. 30 minutes into that exercise, I was pretty much done with it. I decided to copy everything from the original inventory screen all into the new one. There's just so much more code than just showing it on screen. There was a lot of stuff happening. I needed all that stuff anyway, like uh, sorting everything into categories, things like that. I needed all that code. So um, I just copied everything from the original and started shifting things around, uh, changing the background color into a dialogue screen, the blue background dialogue thingy, uh, making bigger icons, moving text around and just a lot of uh, moving, copying and pasting until it looked okay. And then once all that was done on Tuesday, I had most of it up and running and looking good. And on Wednesday, I pretty much started adding new functionality like the quick access or all the information for uh, craftables and deployables and all that stuff. So a um, couple of days work. In hindsight, I could have done this easily before releasing the game back in September, but my mind just wasn't there at that time. My mind was very busy with the release, with um, making sure there was a Switch version, um, a bunch of other things happening, um, and also starting to work on the new game. I was done with residual at that point, but now I'm really back into residual. I'm just playing it this past couple of days and just finding myself on this planet where nobody else was and nobody else was living. And I was deep underground coming in at an area with a waterfall. I saw some stuff flying around, some rocks dropping, fish swimming. It's just such a vivid game and I have so many more ideas for it. I am slowly gonna start working on those. Now that these changes are in, I'll push it. Um, I'll push all these changes so that Serious Lion can start um, implementing them in the Switch version. Then we can start testing that version. All in all, it's gonna take some weeks or months before this all goes live to you. And by that time, I hopefully also have a version for Android and iPhone up and running. In my mind, my, my perfect mind, the plan is to release it in June, but it's now May the 12th, uh, four weeks from now. I'm not really sure if June is a realistic uh, month. I'm not really sure if June is a realistic deadline for all of this. I might have it all up and running. I'm not sure I can release it because I'll have to go through, um, Apple has to approve it, Google has to approve it. I'll have to prepare some stuff for it and do some press release thingies, all that. It's all coming. Step one, phase one was the new inventory screen and that's done this week. And next week I'll be working on Regulator City probably because that game still needs some love and attention before the demo goes live also in June. So it's gonna be a busy month, June, uh, but it's gonna be fun. A lot of stuff that's gonna be released and happening. So um, that's good. And that's it for this week's video. I do want to ask you if you bought or played Residual on Steam, please, please, please leave a review or comment or whatever uh, 
on the, on the Steam page. And you need a certain amount of uh, reviews to get noticed by Steam. You need a certain amount of positive reviews to even get noticed even more. And there are positive reviews, uh, but a lot of those are Kickstarter backers. Those reviews don't count to those positive numbers for some reason. So if you bought it, or if you know somebody who bought it, or if you know somebody that should be buying it, tell them about residual, let them leave a comment behind a review, uh, preferably positive, but I can't ask you to do that. You just have to figure out, uh, do you like the game or not? Especially with these updates coming, please drop a review on the game. And, and not just for my game, drop a review on all the indie games you've been playing, especially those that have very little uh, amount of reviews or just need some extra love and attention because it helps us a lot to uh, fight the algorithm that's called uh, Steam. Is, is the algorithm called? I don't know. It's just, it just helps us a lot. So leave comments and reviews on games that you played and enjoyed, not just on the games you hate, but also on the games you really love and like. Thanks for that. On behalf of all us indie game developers and solo game developers, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Um, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below, share the video with everybody. See you next week. Bye.